All right, what's up, y'all? Nice to see you all. Uh, my name is Yancy Strickler. I'm the co-founder and director of MetaLabel and the co-founder and former CEO of Kickstarter. And about a year ago, uh, I hit a wall creatively. I had greenlit too many projects, and I was struggling under the weight of all of my commitments. A community I was responsible for, writing projects I'd signed on to do, advising and supporting other organizations. I was trying to balance it all, but struggling. And I felt a creeping sense of failure uh, as I just wasn't living up to what I wanted to be. And there was one day in particular where I remember being ready to just quit all of it, like I was just done. Uh, I wanted to flip over the table uh, and just walk away. And then I was struck by a really strange idea. At the time, I was reading a book called Our Band Could Be Your Life by the journalist Michael Azarad, which lovingly tells the origin stories of indie rock and punk rock in America. I've read this book several times, and each time I'm struck by how entrepreneurial the origins of indie rock were. There were small groups of people around the US in the 1980s, starting bands, starting scenes, starting labels, that evolved into a decentralized network for art outside the mainstream that remains vibrant to this day. And when I was reading the book again this particular time, I was really struck by the labels, classic indie record labels like Touch and Go or Discord, K Records, Matador, labels that have meant a lot to me growing up. And reading about them here, it was striking how much they did with so few people. Most of these labels are just one person or a few people working together, but yet they were able to find and sign bands. They physically manufactured and distributed records. They gave bands creative and financial support. They helped them go on tour. They promoted their work in the larger scene. And all of these different functions these labels provided all added up to the same core goal. If you're a punk label like Discord, everything you did was making more punk happen in the world. All of it came down to this core purpose. And as I was reflecting on this and reflecting on all these different projects I had on my plate, I asked myself this strange question, what if all these different things I'm doing aren't the scattered output of a single creator? But what if they're instead more like the catalog of a label? Now when I tried on this lens of being a label, the effect was immediate. Emotionally, I went from feeling discouraged and overwhelmed to feeling empowered. As an individual creator, I was chasing hits and I was trying to make things that would matter. But when I thought of myself as a label, I could see that all of my work was actually contributing to the same core ideas and that really I was building a wider world with everything I did. I went through all my past work and through that was able to create my catalog of what I'd made before able to identify what my label was, the idea space. And I was able to put a lot of my projects in a sort of a structure, a narrative form that let me make sense of them in a very different kind of way. But this is kind of funny because, you know, don't we all hate labels now? Like labels are the single worst institution in the world, seemingly. Uh, everyone loves hating on record labels. They're like the horse and buggy of culture, an old model that no one wants to come back. And major labels, major record labels, have really spoiled the form culturally. They've done it with exploitative practices where they own artists' IP and uh, do bad things with it, shady accounting, centralized systems, sanitized content. There's a lot of things to hate about major labels. But the kind of indie record labels I was reading about in Arc Band Could Be Our Future, they're very different, and their motivations are, are quite distinct. And if you look at those indie labels, there's a few functions in particular that are very valuable that they serve. One is that every label has some purpose that they stand for and are promoting. If you're starting an indie label, you're not doing it to make money. You're not gonna make a lot of money doing it. You're doing it because you care about an art form. You have a jazz label because you care about jazz, a dance label because you care about electronic music. These are passion-driven projects. The second thing labels do is that they invest early in people and ideas. A label is giving money, they're giving creative support, they're developing with someone a new idea. Contrast this to like a, a creator economy, economy platform that's just monetizing something that has already been made. The relationship is very deep and early. You share in the risks and rewards together.
And labels also create a context for everything that they release. If you put out a record on Warp Records, that means something to the electronic community. That's a, a stamp of approval, a validation. It gives you a context to exist within that lifts you up. So the current cultural narrative around labels has caused us to not value them properly. And really the shift of culture over the past few years with the rise of creator economy platforms has made labels much less visible. But they haven't gone away entirely, they've just been evolving into new forms. One especially powerful and distinct type of label is called a meta-label. Now at the highest level, a meta-label is a group of people using a common identity for a common purpose with a focus on public releases that manifest their view. If you think about a punk label like Discord Records, they have a common identity, Discord, they have a common purpose, put out hardcore and punk records, and they have public releases, this music they make, that really defines how they operate. But meta labels are not just restricted to music. Meta labels are a form that can work for any form of art and culture. Fashion labels and music labels use the word label, but a book publisher, a group of activists, a DAO, these are all similar examples, groups of people creating a shared identity for a shared purpose with a focus on public releases. This is a form that applies in many more areas of culture than we thought about it to date. Probably the quintessential example of a meta label today is Mischief, the hard to describe project that has different absurd drops every two weeks that normally break the internet. Things like making bootleg Nikes with Jesus' blood in them, or doing sweepstakes where you pay off people's medical bills. A lot of journalists have spilled a lot of ink trying to make sense of what Mischief is. Is it a company? Is it a brand? Is it an art project? Mischief is a meta-label whose purpose is to reveal how manipulative capitalism is. And it does it ironically using the tools of capitalism and commerce. And every two weeks, two weeks putting out a new drop that reinforces these core ideas and adds to a universe that mischief is creating. And the structure of being a meta-label is crucial to the entire way they function. It's what gives them the freedom to put out new projects every couple weeks, yet they all exist in one universe. But this form of a meta-label is not brand new. It's been around for a very long time. The very first meta-label launched in 1660. It was called the Royal Society. It was what helped spark the Enlightenment and the scientific revolution. A group of people who believed in this thing called science pooled their money to start funding experiments and to create the first scientific journals so scientific knowledge could be more understood in English society. Now, the money used by the Royal Society to promote science was used to fund work by Sir Isaac Newton, by Benjamin Franklin. The, many of the greatest achievements in science were formed, were, were inspired, were funded by this meta-label of the Royal Society, a group of people creating a common identity for a common purpose with a focus on releases. Probably my favorite meta-label that's around today is a project called the Wide Awakes, which is a group of artists and activists and regular people who decided to create an open source network where they would create art and community experiences that would change people's perceptions of their community. This is led by the conceptual artist Hank Willis Thomas, members of The Roots, Alicia Keys are all members. And together in their projects, they've done things like make a mobile soup kitchen, put billboards across all 50 states in the United States, uh, launching parties, uh, activist campaigns. All of these projects, very disparate, being made by lots of different types of people, but they're all going out under the same Wide Awakes name and have the same core goals in the end. So within all of these projects, there are these four elements that they always have. One is they have a core purpose. There's a reason why they exist. There's something that they stand for. They have a squad of collaborators. It could be one person or a group of people who together are determining what is the voice and shape of what we're doing. There are public releases, things they put out into the world to express what they are. And these releases are not just made by the core people of the label, they're made by supporting others, extending the network, creating a wider community. And finally, every meta label has rules for participation, how they make decisions, who owns what, what the economic models are. Now, meta labels are very distinct from what we've thought of as labels in the recent past. 20th century labels are focused on selling products and maximizing their financial returns. That's all they care about. A meta label is not, is not motivated in that same way. A meta label is looking to promote ideas. 
to encourage a new way of seeing, to help people see things the way they see them. A 20th century label is focused on owning a creator's intellectual property and exploiting it financially till the end of time. A meta label is owned by the artists themselves. The rights to that work is determined by the group, how they want to govern those things. This is a bottoms-up organization rather than a top-down one. Now, the reason why the meta-label concept is important and it will be a significant breakthrough in how we make culture is that really over the past decade, we have been lured in by the creator economy. But the creator economy is creativity in single-player mode. These platforms offer zero financial support, zero creative support, zero context for your work. And in fact, it's just every creator for themselves, and the algorithms encourage people to perpetually make as much content as quickly as possible. People burn out, people lose meaning, people lose connection with what they do. In contrast, a meta label is creativity in multiplayer mode. It's a system that's optimized for mutual aid and support, for people collaborating on things together, for a single creator not being the star of every show. Sometimes you are, sometimes you're supporting someone else. But this is a model that reinforces a better experience of what it is to make things, to be a, a cultural producer. Now, a year ago, where I'd gotten stuck was in the creator economy mode. Uh, without realizing it, I got lured into just chasing eyeballs. And I lost the context of my work. I lost what was inspiring to me about it, why I was even doing it. But this insight of being a label changed the way I thought about my work, and it has ended up manifesting an entirely different life experience, too. I'm standing here representing Meta Label, which is a label that exists to create knowledge, resources, and tools that will inspire more Meta Labels, more groups to collaborate, to cooperate, to adopt practices of mutual aid and how they create together. I'm doing this with a squad of other people a group of core contributors, a group of a wider liquid contributors who are contributing in smaller ways, but also labels, artists, service providers, all of us together creating a network of support that can create a new norm for how we create and make culture. We operate by making releases. MetaLabel is not producing a single product that will be a one solution. We will produce incremental releases that will reveal a universe, a world, that we hope will provide value and attract more people to come and join us. This first release is coming out this week, which is the MetaLabel concept itself and a website that explores it and expresses it at metalabel.xyz. Future releases include a community, an editorial space, a directory, and collaborations with other groups. And also within MetaLabel, we're very cognizant of what are our rules of participation. We've adopted several really important values early on that our compensation is egalitarian in terms of straight comp, but also ownership. Uh, our eventual plan is to be community owned, that the value created by Meta Label is owned by everyone who's a part of it. And that we ourselves operate according, more like an indie record label, not trying to maximize our own financial return, but looking to create meaning and to share a worldview out into the wider universe. So each Meta Label is a design space for a group of people to shape what is important to them. Each of these spaces, your purpose, your squad, your releases, your participation, are things that you can iterate on and design according to whatever your group wants and needs. Compared to a company, a for-profit company, where the assumption that the purpose of your project is to make money for yourself or whoever invested in you. Here at the Meta Label, you get to decide what that is. You get to determine that for yourself. Say, unlike a DAO, where a DAO is optimized, save for the squad and people coming together. A meta label has this focus on releases. It's about a public output. Yes, it's about what you care about as a group, but it's about how you manifest that in the wider world and create space for people to play with it, to interact with it, to do things together. This is a form that fits for a lot of those hard to define projects, but yet end up having so much resonance in culture. If I could have you walk away with one idea one takeaway is that meta labels are startups and ins institutions for culture. A traditional startup, that is an institution for capital in a lot of cases. Uh, but a meta label exists to promote new ideas into the world. It's a recipe for cultural creation, how groups of people can come together and shape the world. They want to see it. And this is a model that has a lot of success in the past and I think really fits with where the internet is today.
Uh, you can learn more at metalabel.xyz if you want to dig in and become involved. And really, the core, it's all, it's all built on this belief that as individuals, our powers are limited, but in groups, we become exponentially stronger. And that's what we hope to inspire with Metalabel. Peace.